lovely Cancerians. This is your reading for November 2019. Love messages, general messages, any messages that are coming through for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Cross Watchers, anybody. Valentine joins us on her velvet cushion. She's really, really snuggly. She's been here for hours, actually. She just loves it, having the tarot going on in the background. And of course, being on that velvet. Okay, Cancer, what do we need to know? I've been looking forward to doing your reading, actually. I feel like this has been a very challenging year for you so far. And here we are doing the November reading. You know, we're at almost the end, oh my God, of 2019. And for you, I feel like we are heading for your eclipse, which is on January the 10th, I think. One moment. Let me just check what I'm telling you. Okay, Moon Diary, January. Yeah, full moon lunar eclipse in Cancer. I feel like it's a big, big deal. Big, big deal. Ooh. Emotionally, in terms of relationships, woo. And you know, you're ruled by the moon as it is. Oh, that's nice. So it just feels like a kind of a big bursting gift. But by the time you get to it, you kind of deserve it because of what you did during 2019, especially the first half of 2019. Very, very difficult year for Cancerians. Very, very difficult. I feel like things picked up around July. Well, they went a bit weird for everybody in July, but then we went into Leo season in August and I feel like they did pick up for you and will continue to do so. How very interesting. Some of you, my dear Cancerians, are dealing with an Aquarius. <laughs> I say that because you're getting some of the cards that they got as well, that Aquarius just got. Wow. This is an interesting read. Okay, there will be an extended reading for this and the link is in the description box, okay? Okay, I've thought this a lot actually, yeah. I've thought this a lot for Cancerians in the second half of 2019. Sorry, I'm just moving the camera with my cards. Um, if there was ever a time to get your disco pants on, to pimp your profile, you know, to do what Cancerians never want to do. I'm a fellow water sign, I'm a Pisces. And, you know, Cancerians arguably are perhaps even more introverted than we are. So I'm not saying this would be your normus, normus, normal modus operandi. Oh my God, I cannot speak today, Cancerians. Put it this way, you're not exactly gonna stand on the table and like be shaking the boot -ah, okay? That's not really your thing, but, Second half of 2019, going into 2020, it would really pay if you could step up in your confidence, okay? And that includes romantically, because the opportunities for you are going to be bigger and better than they've ever been before, okay? Especially those of you that have been tied down, bogged down, by situationships with people who have been a difficult influence for you. And for some of you, that energy is in this reading. Okay. Hermit in reverse. It's time to come out, Cancerians. Come out of your shell, okay? Now, November, you know, not quite party season, but not far off. Also, good excuse to socialise when we do get into party season. This is Mercury retrograde time. We have a lot of scorpionic energy knocking around. For you as well, there is some kind of... D 
desire or feeling or opportunity and this was very similar to Aquarius that's why I think some of you are dealing with people who've got Aquarius in their chart an opportunity to get very straight with somebody about where you are with each other there's somebody you can't forget or stay away from in this reading. Six of Cups. Scorpio energy, the Six of Cups in particular, but more importantly, it's the card of childhood sweethearts. But it's more than childhood sweethearts. It's people that you're kind of where you feel like it's meant to be, okay? Could be dealing also, it's either an Aquarius, we've got Gemini on the table, we've got Scorpio on the table as well. Or Virgo, I mean, but not so much. I think with the um, Hermit card, this is more about you coming out of yourself. Especially if you've been in any kind of hiding because of what happened with somebody in a relationship. Six of Cups is a kind of a karmic relationship card, a soulmate card, a young energy card, a feeling of being bound to somebody and you have felt bound to somebody because here I've got the Eight of Swords and that is a feeling of not being able to get somebody out of your head even if you wanted to. As we move into Mercury, we have this really strange Scorpionic, it's not strange, it's just Scorpionic. They have this Scorpionic energy with the new moon in Scorpio on the 28th of October leading us into Mercury retrograde on Halloween. I mean, come on, this doesn't get more Scorpionic than that. So Mercury retrograde in Scorpio on Halloween sort of tumbles us backwards into November and it's like some kind of twilight zone in November. And I feel like for some of you, there is a chance to really confront A, your relationship patterns, B, any uh, family patterns that might have been holding you back and C, any kind of lack of confidence or any um, feelings that you may have been hiding from yourself because they're too painful to feel. Thank you for that. Did you hear that? We got beeped. Now, for some of you, this may, there may be somebody, particularly if it's an Aquarian, showing up for you, okay? At the top of your reading, I've got the star. Now, the star, of course, is the card of Aquarius, so it can mean an Aquarius showing up for you. That's very specific for some of you. But also, this is a card of hope. It's new hope in the time of Aquarius. Now, when is the time of Aquarius? My dates are so bad. January the 20th-ish to February the 20th-ish, something like that. That's right after your eclipse. So all roads are kind of leading to this time in the new year at the moment as we head into the dark kind of tunnel of Mercury retrograde and all the weirdness that's showing up. I'm getting a kind of a feeling of you going through, you know, when you're on a ghost train. Oh my God, you're on a ghost train, like a romantic ghost train. And there you are, lovely Cancerian on the ghost train like this. Now Cancerians not known for their love of horror and things that shock them, okay? Neither Pisceans. And there you are and like boyfriend or girlfriend of, of past, like that, pops out of the ghost train. <laughs> There's like a kaleidoscope of past lovers here and you're like, oh my God, fronds of, of people, okay? Do you get it? I'm getting that your past comes back to haunt you, but in quite a kind of doable way. It's time. This is your eclipse year, okay? So and now it's time. When it's your year of eclipses and you've had, I think, two this year so far, that right you had the one in 2018 that was a real stinker mm, Friday the 13th 2018 and then you had one you had one on the 2nd of July this year didn't you then there's the one in January okay it feels like 
it's time, as they say, for you to confront. It's time for you to confront the ghosts of your past. Got the devil in reverse. Now I'm pleased to see this in the reverse. Very pleased to see it in the reverse because it's Capricorn and that's your opposite sign and that's the sign that we're going to have. We've had eclipses in all year as well. We've got one on the 26th of December. We had one on the 16th of July just after the one we had in Cancer. So this is your opposite sign. This is difficulties for you. This is shadow sides for you. This is people who've stolen from you. Um, people who have let you down or exhibited to you a pattern that you are very familiar with already okay now this year's a game changer you don't want to continue this pattern you're not going to continue this pattern into 2020 because by the time you get to that eclipse in 2020 things look different but this is how they change okay so we have the six of cups next to the devil in reverse wowzers yeah and you coming out of your shell with the hermit card that's quite a beautiful energy actually now down here i've got the six of swords and the six of swords when it's in the reverse is not being able to escape something feeling like something is kind of unshakable someone's energy is unshakable and in the middle i've got the lovers the lovers the lovers now the lovers in reverse again the choice in the reverse sometimes when you've got the lovers in reverse apart from that you could be dealing with a gemini obviously it's because you feel like you don't have a choice you feel blocked about a person for some of you this there is somebody on your mind that you feel like you can't forget that you feel like you can't get in the boat and move on from that you feel like there is some kind of unfinished business, okay? And this person may or may not have been a bit toxic for you. Expect during this Mercury retrograde to be revisiting this like the ghostly fairground, but in a way it's purging. Four of cups in reverse, letting go of some kind of emotional... Um, what's the word it's like when all your emotions psh, emotional fountain but in a good way it may make you feel um tested you are being tested this year cancer you are being tested but ultimately with that beautiful star card crowning the reading i feel like we go from the devil to the star and that's a trip worth making, okay? Now, for some of you, there is somebody who is not showing in this reading, which is very interesting. There's no identity. So they're either silent, far off, or you really haven't seen them in a while, or they've... I don't know. There's something. It feels... I just want to take one more card... what do we need to know what do my lovely cancerians need to know is it you ten of wands in the reverse release there's a great need to release somebody here and yet there's potential wow two of wands could be dealing with a fire sign, Sagittarius or a Leo in particular. Let's have Chuck Spezzano love cards. No, actually, I'm having a Brian and Wendy Frude card first for you. Itchy nose, so we're on the right path. Hello. <laughs> oh, my loves. Oh, my God. Okay. I will be looking further into this in the extended reading, she says, now I know. The heartless love. And that is you searching for this person that you can't let go of. And the captive man. 
that's someone who's either in a relationship or stuck in a situation with somebody or something in an entanglement of some kind. Wow. Okay. For some of you, you're dealing with someone who either has like two names or you have a nickname that only you have for them. Because I'm getting this thing about identity and how if they did come through, they're not coming through as themselves. That might just be for one or two of you. Some of you are just desperate for this person to come back with the Six of Cups, but they are in separation somehow. Yeah. Chuck Spezzano, we get feeling unwanted. That's you at the moment. The problem card of independence, that's the way that they are living. They may not be on their own, but they are kind of shut down. And then the luck card of responsiveness. Now, I suppose the question is with those cards, do you approach them, you know? Hi Val, Val's woken up to that. What do you think Val, do we approach them? You know, do you approach them? Will they approach you? Do they appear? Because Mercury retrograde, of course, is the time of whether somebody appears or not. I know it's a cliche, but it is true. People do, they either appear to you in weird ways or they literally appear. Let's take, if I'm gonna do it without falling off my chair, an Oracle card. Oh my God, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Chaos and conflict. That's what's been happening your entire eclipse year. And that's what's bringing you up to the January eclipse. And either, you know, really clearing the decks or making something happen one way or the other. Wowzers, Cancer. I will dig into that in the, in the extended reading. My nose is starting to itch already. So if you want to join me, I'm scooching over there now. Just hit the Vimeo link in the description box. And otherwise, do check out my Pick a Card readings. They're very useful. And subscribe to the channel, Cancer, and I'll see you soon. Namaste.